Well, asthma is the most common chronic disease among children. It's usually controlled with medication and some planning. But respiratory physiotherapist Jessica DeMars is here now, along with one of her study participants, Michaela Brown, to show us about her new research and how it suggests breathing properly may actually help as well as all that planning and medication. Good morning to you both. Good morning. So Jessica, tell us about this new research study and what you found. Um, so basically what we did is we were looking to see um, were there what we call dysfunctional breathing patterns, so suboptimal breathing patterns, I guess, in kids with asthma. And so that was kind of one arm of it. And the other arm of it was if we did some breathing exercises for them, did it make an improvement in their quality of life? And what did you find? Well, we had 35 kids come through this for the assessment part of the study, and we found that 29 of the 35 showed signs of dysfunctional breathing. So typically that was observable with an, what we call an upper chest breathing pattern instead of nice belly breathing. And there's been previous research, research that has shown that the upper chest breathing pattern tends to... Um, go hand in hand with more shortness of breath, whether you have asthma or not, um, but definitely within asthma. So that was one big finding that we had. So mm -hmm. it kind of made us think, hmm, you know, maybe we should be looking at this with kids For with sure. asthma. What are their breathing patterns like? Right. And what did you find with Michaela? Because Michaela, you've had asthma since you were two. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. And so, Jessica, you taught her some of these breathing techniques. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Michaela fell into that pattern of having this upper chest breathing pattern. Mm -hmm. um, and so, she was part of the group. So, of the 35 that we saw, 28 mm -hmm. participated in kind of the, in, um, the uh, controlled part of the group. So, 14 of them had, went through a six-week program of breathing exercises, and 14 did not, so that we'd have someone to compare it to. And Michaela was part of our, what we call our intervention group. So, she had six weeks of breathing exercises to try to improve her breathing pattern, so get more towards a belly breathing pattern, and then strengthen that pattern up with some um, breathing muscle strength training, basically. Wonderful. Can you demonstrate these techniques for us? Yeah. You learned how to do this, right, Michaela? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, show us how it works. So what it does is it provides a resistance to breathing in, and it makes your diaphragm, so your main breathing muscle, and your rib muscles work a little bit harder. Now, Michaela, what I'm going to get you to do is, uh, can you do it wrong for me, so where you use these big muscles here. So this okay. is what we don't want to see kids doing, okay. right? And so what, I'm, what I was seeing in the study and, and clinically in my practice is this is what I'm seeing kids do. Right, and right. they're doing this when they're exercising and they're doing this at rest and al along with that comes more anxiety and sure. more shortness of breath and more kind of, um, they're more unsure about their, their asthma, right? It, they might start pulling out of sports and activities and things like that. Right. So what we found with doing this, the, the, the intervention, the six-week um, program, is that of the 14 that participated, mm -hmm. um, 12 of them had what we call a clinically significant improvement mm. in their quality of life. Wow, so, that's good news. And when you looked at that further, yeah. the subscores were more that it was actually in, um, that, that um, uh, questionnaire is divided into different subsections. And one of them is an emotional function content, which sure. has to do with kind of how they feel about their asthma, which kind of translates into um, confidence, right? Sure. And that was the highest score that improved. No kidding. So, yeah. Michaela, what have you found since you've learned how to breathe better? I found that because I was doing school sports at that time, I could run. I was doing school sports at that time, I could run faster and longer. Wow. It that's really impressive. Helped. It really helped, hey? Mm -hmm. What about your medication? Did you start doing less of it? Yes. Really? It, a lot less. A lot less medication? Yeah. Interesting. So isn't that interesting for you as the clinician as well? Yeah, and, and that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to get rid of asthma medication because asthma medication plays a very important role right. in controlling inflammation in the airways. Okay. But if there's another component in there that's affecting their symptoms, like dysfunctional breathing, right. the medication's not going to change that. So can we improve on them further? And um, what we see is less medication use because their symptoms were attributed to bad, bad, breathing, bad breathing, not yeah. to the airway inflammation at that time. So it's a little bit, you kind of have to um, look at it as a, as a whole thing. It's not sure. a replacement for medication use, right. but it's an adjunct to right. asthma management. And so like Michaela, for example, saw a significant improvement. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah, and the importance is, of that is nowadays they're saying that asthma is being overdiagnosed or right. misdiagnosed, right? And yeah. so, so if kids are coming to their doctors with shortness of breath issues, um, yes, let's investigate asthma properly, but let's also consider that something else could be at play. Right, like this breathing. Like this breathing. Fascinating. Jessica, thank you so yeah, much. Thank you, Michaela, for coming in and telling us all about your story. <laughs> well, there you go. Let's get another check on the forecast, Andy.